In today's show, we're looking back at the Los Angeles Lakers season for 2021-2022. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. I am here to talk about the Los Angeles Lakers season. So many words have already been said about this Lakers season. I was not as high on them heading into the year. I had them projected as the fifth seed in the Western Conference. Turns out I was way too optimistic. But, you know, it was, yeah, Westbrook's not good anymore. He hasn't been good for a couple of years. We knew all this stuff. A lot of this stuff made sense at the time. I just didn't think it would go as badly as it was. I don't need to shit on the Lakers organization continually here. It gets done plenty. And they need to make some big changes. By the time you listen to this, maybe they've hired a new head coach. I don't know. Maybe they've made a move to trade Russell Westbrook. I don't know. Um, Those two things are going to happen. The new coach is going to come in. Surely they're going to trade Russell Westbrook. But what do you do in that scenario? There's a lot of unanswered questions. And I'll tell you what they're not going to do is get better at the draft because they don't have a pick. At this point, that pick is likely going to the Pelicans unless multiple teams from behind them in the lottery jump ahead and then it goes to Memphis. So they've lost the pick. They don't have their second round pick either. That pick has gone to the Spurs. So no picks. Now they can always buy picks. They're pretty good at getting late picks and getting undrafted guys. They're good at that stuff. But they don't have any sort of first rounder. And they could end up, in theory, losing the number one overall pick here. If that number eight spot jumps into the top four, the Pelicans get it. Or the Pelicans get it anyway, anywhere in the top 10. So that's bad. Free agency? It's pretty bad. Russell Westbrook, he's got a $47 million player option. He will pick that up. I would expect that he gets traded somewhere and I would expect that he gets bought out, to be honest. Charlotte, Indiana, there's no reason for him to... Indiana especially, why would they want him to play? Charlotte, is that organization stupid? Why would they get him to play? I don't know where he fits. If he was on the open market right now, Russell Westbrook, what contract would he get? $10 million, maybe? What, what's he worth? I, I don't know where he fits. All I know is that $47 million is too much. Kendrick Nunn, who played exactly zero games this year, he has a $5 million player option. He will pick that up. Presumably, he plays at least a second this next coming season. I'm not particularly high on him, but there was role and minutes for him this year. And the following players are all unrestricted free agents. Carmelo Anthony, Avery Bradley, the Duke Wayne Ellington, Dwight Howard, Kent Bazemore, Malik Monk, DJ Augustin, Wenyan Gabriel. Austin Reeves and Stan Johnson both have team options. I would expect both of those, especially Reeves, get picked up. And then you've got Mason Jones as a two-way guy who, you know, I think there's something in Mason Jones. But what's their roster? 47 million for Westbrook, 44 and a half for James, 38 for Davis, 10 for Horton Tucker, five for none, and then Reeves and Johnson. And then you've got to try and fill in the gaps again with minimum salary guys. That's why they need to trade Westbrook. They need to break that contract down into smaller parts and pieces. You don't need to do a one for one for John Wall. You need to get some other guys in there. Yeah, Avery Bradley, I obviously wouldn't bother bringing back. Ellington, Howard, maybe. Bazemore, no. Monk, yeah, but you're not going to be able to afford him because he's going to. you're limited, I think, 120% of the $1.7 million. You can't actually pay him much. Mallow, maybe, but why? What's the point? He was solid enough, but what's the point? They're, they're in real strife again, and their offseason is pivotal, and it all comes down to the coach, number one, no, not number one, what they do with Westbrook and how Palinka deals with that and then what they do secondarily with the coach. And of course, their season's going to hinge on whether LeBron and Anthony Davis can stay healthy. But they've got to do something with Westbrook here. If they run it back, Jesus Christ, maybe it's better. Can't be worse. Maybe it's better. Honestly, doubt that though. But we will um, see exactly what direction they decide to go. But there are a lot of unanswered questions. They're not going to be big, flashy, splashy free agent guys. They don't have the money to do it. 
It's all going to be around that Westbrook deal, which again, if you you might be listening to this and it's already happened. I don't think so, but it might have already happened. That lets me tell you about Shady Rays. It's got nothing to do with Russell Westbrook, but it's an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed, durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also, something you won't find anywhere else is Shady Ray's insane protection program, the S-Rip. Shady Ray's includes lost and broken protection on every pair. They'll send you a brand new pair if you lose them, no matter what happened. Hey, Shady Ray's, I lost my sunglasses. No worries, Josh, here's a new pair. Are you serious? Yeah, no, I lost them. Uh, yeah, have them. Have a new one. Shady, my guy. A new pair. A new pair? Okay, give them a try. If you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. It's as simple as that. Plus, 10 meals are donated to Fight Hunger in America when you shop with Shady Rays, exclusively for our listeners. Head to ShadyRays.com and use the code Locked On to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's the code Locked On for their best deal of the season. 50% off two or more pairs of Shady Rays sunglasses, backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. Let's talk players. Let's talk LeBron James. Fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No. It's a fucking goat. Now, his ADP was 22. I was very much in the in the boat of, hey, at the turn of the second and third round, I'll happily take him. I did it in a draft. I took him there. I, under no circumstance, thought that LeBron would be the fourth-ranked player this year in category leagues or the fifth-ranked player in points leagues, averaging 53. I thought first round for points leagues, no problem. Top nine, no worries. But why, my thinking on this was, I did not expect LeBron James at age 37, age 37, to play 37 minutes a night when the whole idea of bringing Russell Westbrook in was to take some of the creation load off LeBron, him to ease off the, the gas pedal a little bit and be able to do a little bit less. Remember, the year before, LeBron played 33 minutes. Okay, and he was the 21st ranked player. He also shot his best free throw percentage in 10 years almost. I think about eight years. When the last three years, he's been under 70% on decent volume, making it a punt category. He went to 76 this year. Really didn't impact you, did it? Played 37 minutes, averaged 30 points. The most I think he's averaged in his career. Didn't see that coming. Westbrook came in and we thought, yes, there would be an impact on his assist. And there was. It went from eight down to six. We thought that would happen. But I did not, under any circumstance, think we would play four extra minutes. We would increase the field goal percentage, increase the free throws by six percentage points. Also, double his block rate. So while you can come out and say, oh, you haters, you just give up on LeBron. What kind of fucking stupid fantasy analyst wouldn't take LeBron in the first round? If you can come out, again, this is how I'll always want to approach this stuff. He's a 37-year-old man. I expect him to block double the amount of shots. I expect him to have a career high in scoring. I expect him to play more minutes despite Westbrook coming in and expect him to have the best free throw shooting career of percentage of the last 10 years. If you said, this is my argument for taking LeBron in the first round, I and every other logical person in the world would say, you are fucking insane. Why would you expect those things? And that's why when we always want to assess what we do in fantasy, we look at it and go, well, if I took LeBron at five, it worked out. You go, hey, see, it wasn't a mistake. It worked out, but it was a mistake. And that uh, people confuse process with results a lot. How can it be a mistake if you ended up fourth and you took him sixth? Because you banked on a bunch of very, very small percentage chance things happening and it worked out. Your process was completely wrong. What evidence did you suggest to say that LeBron would be the best field goal percentage guy, higher scorer, play more minutes, double his shot block rate, and be the best free throw of his career? Like, What evidence could you have that any of that stuff would happen with what Russell Westbrook playing and with Anthony Davis not injured to start the season? You had none of them. And I think that's, and if you, again, if we go into next season and go, well, I'll take LeBron at pick seven because what he did last season, you're expecting all of those things to continue, which I don't think they will. So I have no problem with being wrong on the final result of having LeBron in the you know, 18 to 25 or wherever I had him, somewhere around that zone. You want to call me a dickhead for doing it? I've got no problem. You think I hate LeBron? <laughs> You're wrong, <laughs> obviously. Well, not obviously, because you think it. I obviously don't hate LeBron. But when I try to go through these things, it's about looking at why it would happen, how it could happen, how could this, how could I possibly justify those things happening? And I couldn't. That's why he was down as far as he was. 
because we didn't expect those things to happen. One thing I did expect to happen is assist to drop, and they did. It's just that everything else somehow went through the roof. How much do we think LeBron was going to play center this year? Zero minutes. I thought he'd play at center. Zero. Yet he played a whole bunch there. And that, that was wrong. But I don't think you could have gone in with all... Yeah, in all honesty, gone and go, you know what, guys? So, yeah, LeBron's going to play over half his minutes at center. Like, you couldn't you couldn't have said that. Impossible. Anyway, LeBron's numbers were great. EPM, plus 6.1, 99th percentile. Right at the top of estimated wins. True shooting of 63%. Big numbers in his own metric. LeBron, up the top there, 3.37. On-off numbers. Actually, not that good. Negative 0.1. Interesting. Raptor. Led the team, 4.7. If you don't include the 20 minutes that Jay Huff played or the 16 that Seiko Dumbaya played, 4.7. But again, I think there's a lot of context. He played a lot of center. The team sucked defensively when he was out there. He racked up a lot of counting stats in gigantic minutes. And of course, he played 56 games with multiple injuries. Knees and ankles again. He's 37. It's going to be 38 early portion of next season. I, I won't take him in the first round. I probably won't take him in the second round just because I'm really worried about the body and where, where he sits with that. Tell me, what do you think? Am I crazy? Should I have... Okay, how, how do you assess this? Like, if you had LeBron in the 20s, are you just flat out wrong? Was it your wrong thought process? I, I like to know how others approach that because that's how I, I looked at it. Yeah, I always look back at everything I do and go, how did I miss this? I go, well, I couldn't have got it. I, I, you couldn't, I couldn't have. So that's where I sit with that. Hope that makes sense. Anthony Davis, on a per-game basis, he wasn't great, but he was sort of about where we had him. Start of the second round, he ended up 17th on a per-game basis. His ADP was 13. He averaged 23 and 10, three assists, 2.2 blocks, 1.2 steals. Good numbers. And honestly, the thing that brings him down is all of a sudden now he's a bad free-throw shooter. He was ninth in points leagues. You punted free throws. He was at 71% on six attempts. It's a top 10, top 11 player. The problem is he played 41 games, half the year. It's two bad years in a row for Davis, injury-wise. And a lot of his injury problems in the past have been overblown. He had, I think, a three or four-year period of playing 75-plus games. The last two have been a disaster. There are going to be plenty of people watching this right now. Hey, type it in the comments. I am never drafting Anthony Davis again. That is in your head. I guarantee you that is in your head. Right, You just get a few of those people in your league and you will find Davis drop to the 20s and 30s. He is, on a per-game basis, a yeah, theoretically, could he be number one again? Probably not. Could he be ninth? Dealing with the free throw percentage? Sure. And the risk priced in is where do you, where do you take him? Pricing in that risk of injuries. That's, that's the question. On a total value basis, total. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking at the wrong thing there. Let me bring that up. Um, I'm going to look at his total value in category leagues. So I think that's important to note in general, just to get an idea of how much the impact of missing half the games has. Not that I am a big um, total value player, as, as you're well aware of my thoughts on that as a valuation tool. But Davis was 98th for totals for playing half the games. LeBron's 16th, by the way, in that metric. I just think there is going to be... I will bite on Anthony Davis at some point again. He had a plus 5.3 um, net rating, 3.4 EPM. He was still pretty good when he played. Not quite at his peak, but still pretty good. Second on this team in Raptor really comfortably. But where's the, where's the bite point? Where do we go with him? You don't do it in the top 10. You probably don't do it in the top 15. If I'm sitting at 24 and he's there, it's not quite league winning, but it, it, it might be. And most of his injuries, they're fluky things. They're not, they're not wear and tear Malcolm Brogdon injuries. They're like, hey, he goes up, he lands, and someone falls on his leg and it crumples in half. It's that sort of stuff, which, again, we've seen a prolonged period where Davis was healthy three or four years in a row. And he's got a reputation for being hurt, but I honestly think he'll fall to the 30s in some drafts. He's still only 29. His dynasty value is going down. He's not a first-round dynasty guy anymore, I don't think. I'm pretty sure of that. But it's going to be really interesting to see um, 
to see how people evaluate him. And I think what will end up happening is I'll end up being higher on him because I am willing to take a bit more of a risk with players like that than others are. And I'll end up with him in drafts at like 26 or 27. Let's look at Russell Westbrook. In category leagues, he was the 103rd ranked player. <clears throat> One of those guys who hurts you in both field goals and free throws. I don't need to relitigate how bad of a trade it was and how bad he was on court. He had some decent moments. And to be fair to him, he improved as the season went on. He averaged 19, 7, and 7 under a steal. That's really bad for him, who'd been a high steals guy in the past. 45 and 67. So real and under 30 from three. They're really bad numbers. In a points league, he was still 37th. This is a guy who was like fourth overall in points leagues last the season before that. Dropped off a lot. I just don't know what his future brings. It's not on this team. Is it in Charlotte? Is it in Indiana? Is it in Houston? Is it as a backup? I, I honestly. I don't know. Is, all right, this might sound hyperbolic. In a category league, is Russell Westbrook draftable next season? What do you think? Because we look at it, what are the chances he's a starting point guard playing 34 minutes a night? It's not 100. It's not 100%. Is it 50? Is it 20? Because if it's a 20% chance and we're drafting now, I'm not taking him. I'm not drafting him. 18 minutes a night, 14, 6, and 6 on bad percentages. I, I, I'm i not drafting him in a category league if he's in actually a backup. He's 33. I don't, think it, I don't think much of it gets better. And we can say, oh, maybe he's learned his lesson. This has been the same shit for years. For three, four years. Uh, Russell, just let Russ be Russ. Russell learn. He... he He's on a good team now. It doesn't change. Is there any introspection? Look at his um, exit interview. No introspection whatsoever. I just don't think the dude's going to think I am the problem at any at any point. And that's where the value just falls off a cliff. His Raptor was disgusting. Negative 3.1. The only players worse were Avery Bradley and Trevor Ariza. His EPM was negative 1.1. League average, it probably should be worse than that. True shooting, 51%. E-field goal percentage, 48. Like, terrible. 56% at the rim. Horrendous finishing. Horrendous. Bad shooting everywhere across the court. Yeah, he still gets a lot of assists. Turns the ball over a ton as well. We know that. Most metrics are, are really down on him. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Darko hates him. On off, he was a negative point too. Like, I... I if you're in a dynasty league, in a category dynasty league, I I think that I think you can put a real line through the top 50, never happening again. Um, and I, I think that we are in a situation where he has had his last season where he is a full-time starter. I think that's a possibility. I don't think it's a guarantee without me knowing at this point. I think it's a possibility to see where things are going. It's not just a possibility, though, that Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever, because it definitely is. There's no doubt about that. I've had protein bars. I know what they taste like. I might as well lick the pavement, or the footpath, as we would call it here, the sidewalk. Built Bar tastes like a candy bar. It's bloody delicious. But it's low in calories, 130 in most of these bars, but jam-packed with 17 grams of protein. Low in calories, low in fat, low in sugar, high in taste. Got some fiber in there as well. Great flavors, cookies and cream, coconut, raspberry, strawberry, orange. We love them. And you can get them for 15% off. If you head to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15, you'll save 15% off your order of Built Bar. Built Bar is built different. Now that I've got that out of my system, well, not out of my system. If you're a Westbrook fan, let me know. How stupid am I? Am I wrong? Is he going to prove me wrong? Is he going to puff face emoji and show me how he's built different? He's a real hooper. Malik Monk, very impressive. For a shit season for the Lakers, he was him and probably Austin Reeves, the big bright points to me. Monk played 28 minutes. It should have been more. Averaged 14 points, 2.3 triples, 3 assists, 47 and 80%. Shot 39% from um, 3. Big positive offensively in Raptor. One of the top players there. It was LeBron, Davis, Reeves and Monk. They're your top four players in Raptor. And he played more minutes than any of those guys. I think he led this team in you know, Westbrook did, sorry. Good EPM. 69th percentile EPM overall. Bad defensively, but pretty strong overall. 
I team he's he should get easily priced out of the Lakers uh, market. Do you want him playing thirty minutes a night? Probably not on most teams. As a twenty five minute a night guy, billing in like a Jeremy Lambis role is a big upgrade on that sort of a player. Like if he was to go to the Kings and play next to De'Aaron Fox, your defense would be disastrous. But it's probably better than Terrence Davis there. There's a little bit of interest in Monk. He's only twenty four. I think he's going to work his way into like three years, 45 million maybe. Is that too much? I don't know. I think he can work his way into that. I think you'd have to be impressed with what he did this year. Def- again, defensive is a real problem. Real problem. And 113th ranked fantasy player, uh, 137th points league guy. Even though I was impressed with him, uh, he might never get that high again. He might never be close to a top 100 guy. He'll have little stretches of being a must roster player, but can he ever establish himself as a persistent and consistent top 80 guy I don't know because it's just based on a lot of volume a lot of threes and being uh, in a situation where the ball's in his hands and I'm not sure that's going to work that often but he was impressive after this it is just honestly I'm sorry kids it's a fucking disaster this roster what what am I going to say about Carmelo Anthony who's 38 years old he played 26 minutes that's 22 20 minutes too many that's not true. He was okay. But 18 minutes is Carmelo's where you should be playing him. He averaged 13 points. He put up some okay defensive numbers. But you can't afford to play Carmelo Anthony that much. Defensively, it's not good. He was still one of their better players by most advanced metrics, but that's an indictment on the roster. He also got by by shooting 49% on mid-ranges and took way more, almost double the amount of shots mid-range than at the rim. That diet is not going to lead to um, sustained efficiency. Turned it over hardly at all, but never got assists. That's just the Carmelo Anthony way. He was better than I expected, but also played too much. And the advanced metrics were a little bit all over the place with him. Uh, would I draft him? No, he was rostered basically all year, which I don't get it. 137th ranked player. There was that, that's, that's solid enough. But it's again, why would I bother holding on to someone like that who doesn't really have the upside and dropped way off and benefited from bunches of injuries? and really just provided points and threes. And that's really it. Points leagues, he was 148th. Am I hating on Carmelo Anthony? Of course I'm not. He's 38 years old. You don't want to rely upon him as we move forward. Taylor Horton Tucker, really interesting season. And by interesting, I mean dreadful until the last three games. He was bad. They signed him to that deal, which was a weird one. Not because of how much they paid him, because he could have easily have played himself into that value, but because of the weird length of it. They, he got you know, two years, or three years, $30 million, with a player option for the third year. So he was paid nine and a half this season, didn't really do anything. Next year, he's going to be paid $10 million. And if he actually outperforms the $10 million, he you know, takes his player option, becomes a free agent. You don't have him anymore. Or he doesn't play well, and he's on the hook for another $11 million the year after. There's no upside as a team on that deal. Three years straight, you give him for $11 million, no worries. You can see him working into that. Give him four years at 12 million, no problem. Because then by the time he hit 24, 25, he's worked into a larger role. And we saw a little bit of what he can do. But the shooting is just a massive problem. 27% from three. He averaged 10, three, and three with a steal. There were flashes from Horton Tuck, 191st in points leagues. But not enough. Defensively, I think he's okay. Ball in his hands, he's strong. But you don't get the ball in your hand when Westbrook and Le- LeBron are on a team. He doesn't make sense on this squad. Do they just end up trading him? He's a guy I'm not getting rid of. Uh, sorry, I'm not giving up on him. He's 21. There is clear upside in him in the right spot. But much like when I talked about the Kings, was that yesterday? I think it was yesterday when I talked about the Kings and DeMontis Sabonis, is that if you tailored things around Horton Tucker, if you tailored them maybe around him, he could put up some really good numbers. But we'd have to do so much stuff to put him in a position. And I don't think he's good enough to be put in that position. Like, get him there, surround him with shooting, let him run some offense, do some work on defense. And he could put up good numbers. But why would a team want to do that? Why would the Lakers want to do that? They wouldn't. So I think there's definite improvement for him. It was a terrible ecosystem for Taylor Horton Tucker this season. But how do you find the right ecosystem for him? Negative 0.6 on-off, which is not terrible. How do you find that right ecosystem? It's all about fit for him. Austin Reeves, impressive. 
Right, impressive. He's 24, so he's older. Played 23 minutes and I as an undrafted rookie. Only averaged seven points. Gave us two assists. Shot the ball pretty well. What's his true shooting was pretty solid, I think. I'm just going to double check that. Um, yeah, 60. Awesome. Thought he made big winning plays. Defensively, he was good. But there's a little bit of the Alex Caruso's in terms of fantasy value, but without steals. Like, he goes out there and he contributes to winning, but do we actually see it for fantasy? He was 281st in category leagues this year. And despite having a really strong role, like, he just doesn't translate to fantasy. Low usage, low rebounds, no assists, low steals. I love what he did. Like, third on this team, Ian Raptor. Big, big positive on defense and solid on offense. EPM likes him as well. Above league average. Good true shooting. Good finishing at the rim. Good defensive play. He was solid in the LeBron metric. Just right about average. A really good find. In the in the end, he's, you want him to be a 7th or 8th rotation player. Not someone that you need to rely upon to start. But as a rookie, he impressed significantly and continued to improve as the season went on. I don't think there really is any sort of upside big you know, fantasy value guy as we move forward for him. I don't really see where that comes. Is he going to be a big steals guy? Is he going to be a big rebounds guy? Is he going to be a big volume player? I don't think any of that. Is he a re- Can he be a really valuable rotation piece who's just really good when he's out there? Uh, yeah, probably. But I'm not sure that the, ever the fantasy stuff comes. Honestly, after him, I don't know what the hell to make here. I know I said this already, but Stanley Johnson, like, is he an NBA player? Probably not. He got some steals. That, that's fine. Is there anything super exciting about what Stan Johnson brings? He was one of the better players based on some advanced numbers, but holy shit. Like, that's a low bar. He was like sixth in Raptor. Seventh, if you don't include Kent Bazemore, who played 500 minutes. He was signed off the scrap heap. He still had a negative 3.5 net rating. He's only, what, 26? I don't really think he's anything that's super exciting. Still, the offense is never going to come. Avery Bradley, I've railed about this all year. He shouldn't have played. He's not good at all. I don't know what Frank Vogel thought he was good at. Um, it wasn't offense. It's not defense. I don't know what he thought he was good at. Significantly overrated as a player. Cannot shoot anymore. Should not be in the rotation at all. And then like Dwight Howard, he's 36 years of age. He had some moments. He's okay as a backup center, but the inconsistency was wild with him in playing time and in production. He was also one of their better players, amazingly. But I don't think we need to care about that for fantasy-wise. DJ Augustin, nothing there. Mac McClung, nothing. Wayne Allington, nothing. Wenyan Gabriel played some games. I thought it was all right at times. But still lacks a lot, and I'm not sure he's an upside starter in the NBA. The only guy I'd look at a little bit here is Mason Jones, who only ended up playing five games in the NBA. Um, was on the Rockets last year as a two-way guy. And... It didn't really do much in his time in the big leagues this year. 10 minutes, 5 points, 47 and 80% shooting. Advanced numbers not particularly good. In the G League, though, 26 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, 1.7 steals, shot 40% from 3. 6 foot 4 guard. They're bloody interesting numbers. So when we look at McClung, Bazemore, all these back-end Johnson, even Reeves, like... Jones has much higher fantasy upside than Reeves. Not someone to discount. Not someone to discount. The other guy to watch there, he was Kendrick Nunn, who, of course, we know just didn't play at all this season. He's going to be 27 when next season starts. I don't think he's particularly good. And the times that he thrived in Miami was when a bunch of guys were out and he had the ball in his hands a ton. He's not a huge volume guy. But what did he do last year for Miami? Um... 30 minutes, he averaged 14, 3, and 3 with a steal. That was 109th ranked fantasy player. The year before that, 29 minutes, 15, 3, and 3. Low steals, low assists. Good free throw shooter, but never gets to the line. Hits some threes and does that that okay. And it's all just going to be about how does the roster form around him. If he starts and plays 30 minutes, he's a 14-team league guy. But as I've said on multiple shows, like... If his best case scenario is 125, I don't bother with that in a 12-team league. And I just don't think that you want to be relying upon Kendrick Nunn to play 30 minutes because I don't think he's particularly good. You might have differing opinions on that, 
But the dude is 27. He missed a whole year. He struggles in a lot of different areas. Defensively, he's pretty shit house, And not a high-volume shooter. And not a good passer. So while he's a little bit forgotten because he didn't play, I think his impact does get somewhat overstated. I think that's probably about all we need to talk about with this squad, amazingly. What a shit show. What they do this offseason is going to be very interesting. What do they do with their coach? And more importantly, what do they do with Westbrook? And then, of course, we'll talk about that throughout the offseason as well. But if you want to talk about LeBron or Westbrook or Austin Reeves or Malik Monk down in the comments below, do it. Anthony Davis, where would you draft him? Drop it in the comments below. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app for here on YouTube. Thumb it up. Leave your comments. Guys, we're done. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.